Sup guys, it's Alex here and welcome to another Bracketology update. This one is for February 8th as you can see up there. And before I get started with the Bracketology, I just wanted to go ahead and talk about the NCAA tournament ticket giveaway. If I get to 2,000 subscribers by March 1st, which right now I'm at 1,929 on uh, February 8th, as you can see right there, we have about 71 subscribers left to go. I think we can get it by March 1st. But if we do get it by March 1st, I will be giving away an NCAA tournament ticket to a uh, NCAA tournament site for one, one lucky subscriber. More details on that will come. I'll be doing it randomly. Like you send me, uh, like you'll follow me on like Instagram or something like that and send me the site that's closest to you and tell me what your favorite team is and stuff like that. More details to come on that if I get to 2,000 subscribers by March 1st. So if you are uh, if you are new, make sure you subscribe. If you're, you've are you been subscribed to me, get your friends, tell them to subscribe and all that so that way you guys can try to uh, win, or win the NCAA tournament ticket and possibly go together. We'll see what happens with that. But yeah, just a quick uh, plug right there. Get me to 2,000 subscribers by March 1st and enter for your chance to win an NCAA tournament ticket. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the bracketology for February 8th. After another crazy week of college basketball, where Kansas lost to Kansas State, and now they're saying that LeGerald Vick is going to be out for a little bit, tending to personal matters, so who knows what's going to happen to Kansas, Kansas now. Still didn't affect them in the seeding, as you can see. They're still down there, number three. I think they should be a four seed right now. Michigan State lost on the road to Illinois, who was like 7-15. and 15. They didn't drop any spots either. They're still two seed. I don't understand what Joe Lenardi's thinking right here. And there hasn't been a whole lot of movement. I mean, as you can see right there in this East Regional, Kansas State's now up to a six seed after beating Kansas. Houston's now up to a three after eh, keeping their role going. I think they've only lost one game the entire season. Buffalo's now down to a 10. Kansas State took their spot. And NC State's now down to a 10 after losing two straight games and one of them only scoring 24 points. But then the next one, they scored 96 and still lost. So eh, two extremes there. And over here in the Louisville region, I won't go team by team this time just because there's not a whole lot of movement. Marquette's now down to a four after losing by one at home to St. John's. Florida State's up to a six after uh, beating Syracuse in the Carrier Dome. Minnesota's now down, down to a 10. And uh, if you guys have been subscribed to me for a little bit and have been watching these videos, you know that I'll be going to the Sweet 16 in, and Elite Eight in Louisville. And I'm so happy to see Kentucky right there as the two seed in Louisville. If it, we could see like Kentucky versus Purdue and then Marquette versus Virginia and then possibly Marquette versus Kentucky, who knows, who knows, who knows? That would be absolutely amazing. I really hope Kentucky ends up in that Louisville Regional and I get to cheer them on so hard during the NCAA tournament. I will be making that vlog for the whole thing, so make sure you're subscribed for that. That'll be a lot of fun. I'm going to be in the first row of the top, uh, of like the top bowl or whatever. I'll be going by myself because everybody else has school and stuff like that. I'm on an internship right now, but I'll be able to get off for that day. But I'm so freaking excited. But that's just a little side note right there. We'll go and get back into the bracketology. Then in the West Regional right here, well, I think I forgot to say, uh, like the little bubble right there, Alabama is now in the tournament. And then in the West right here, Texas is now up to a nine after beating Baylor by like 12 at home or something like that. Belmont's new to the field as the Ohio Valley representative. New Mexico State's now down to a 13. Texas State is new to the field as a 14. The bubble right there is UCF and VCU. UCF's about to play themselves out of the tournament. Wilford is now up to a 10. They're in like an at-large spot right now, so I mean, they may be safe if they don't win their conference tournament. They're looking pretty good. And over here in the Kansas City Regional, we have St. John's now up to a 9 after, as I previously mentioned, going on the road to Marquette and sneaking out a dub right there. Florida is now up to an 11, new to the field, I believe. And then there's another bubble right there, Arizona State, who just got drubbed at home by Washington State. I don't know. I don't think Arizona State deserves to be in the field right now. And then Temple, I think that they do deserve to be in the uh, in the field as of the moment. And Mississippi State is now down to a 7 after losing at home to LSU. That was a heartbreaker loss for Mississippi State. They just had played with no energy. I watched the end of that game. I mean, it was just it was just sad to watch. Then so on the bubble, last four buys, Ohio State, uh, who struggled to uh, beat Penn State last night. More on that later. Minnesota, Alabama, and Florida. Last four in are VCU, UCF, Arizona State, Temple. First four out are Creighton, who forced uh, Villanova into overtime at Villanova. Butler, Seton Hall, and Indiana. A lot of a lot of Indiana teams right there. And a lot of Big East teams. I mean, those first three, first four out uh, teams are all from the Big East. Indiana had a chance to keep themselves in the tournament yesterday playing Iowa, but they couldn't get the job done at home. That big win get, uh, at Michigan State was off for nothing after losing eight of their last nine games. And then the next four out are Utah State, Clemson, Arkansas. 
and St. Mary's. I mean, Arkansas is on the up and up. I mean, nobody expected anything out of them this season. But, yeah, there's a little bit of the bracketology right there. But if you guys are new, I go, uh, go on Bracketify.com and create a bracket for you guys to go ahead and interact with and make your votes based off of Joe Lenardi's most uh, recent bracketology. The link for this will be in the description right there, so make sure you vote after you finish watching the video. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into my picks. I'm excited to do it, and let's go ahead and get into the picks. <laughs> so first off, we have Duke and Bucknell. I think uh, that I can't say Sharpie. I know I say this every single video because UMBC beat Virginia last year. I had Virginia, uh, I think, winning it all. I don't remember. I know I had them in the championship game against Villanova. I can't remember who I picked to win that matchup. But I like Duke winning that matchup here. Ole Miss and uh, Ohio State. Normally in the past, I would have picked Ohio State here, but they just looked awful against Penn State. I mean, it, Penn State was up with like 16 seconds ago, and then they just pooped the bed from there. Ohio State did not deserve to win that game. I'm picking Ole Miss here. And then I really like Iowa State this season. They're one of the teams that I'm like, yeah, I really like. I'm going to go with them beating Hofstra. Then Villanova will beat Vermont. Kansas State and Alabama. Kansas State has been impressing me this, this season. They've been getting some good road wins against, like, Iowa State. and Can I don't know. I don't think they beat Kansas at Kansas. Uh, they had lost, like, eight of their last nine games against Can uh, regular Kansas or stuff like that. But I think that they'll be able to beat Alabama right here, who had beaten Kentucky earlier this season. So watch out for Alabama just in case. Then Houston will be UC Irvine, then Buffalo and NC State. I like NC State actually pulling out the victory here. I know I've been uh, talked a little bit of crap about them in the beginning of the video, scoring 24 points and then losing, but uh, even with scoring 96. But I like them beating Buffalo. Michigan State will beat Loyola Chicago. There isn't going to be a Cinderella run with Sister Jean this year. Gonzaga will beat the winner of Prairie, uh, Prairie View A&M and Robert Morris, who I don't really care who wins that matchup. Syracuse and Texas. I like Tyus Battle and Syracuse pulling out the victory here. LSU and Belmont. I like Nas Reed, who looked really impressive against Mississippi State. I like them beating Belmont. No upset there. Nevada will beat New Mexico State. I'm going with VCU beating UCF and then beating Maryland. I'm going with the 11 over 6 right there. Kansas, I think, will beat Texas State. I'm going with another 10 over 7 upset here. I like Wolford. Uh, I can't remember what the guy's name is. I'm going to be uh, Fletcher McGee. That's his name. He's really good for Wolford. He's an excellent three-point shooter. Auburn's an excellent three-point shooting team, so I mean it could be a three-point battle here, very high scoring. But I like Wolford pulling off the upset here. Then North Carolina will beat Radford. Virginia will beat Sam Houston State. Washington, I think, will beat TCU, which TCU almost lost to Oklahoma State. I think it was Wednesday night. They needed a buzzer beater uh, to not force or overtime or stuff like that. But I like Washington, who's undefeated in the Pac-12. They're rolling right now. Then Texas Tech, I think, would beat Davidson. Marquette with Marcus Howard will beat South Dakota State with Mike Down. Then I like Lipscomb here. I think they're one of the best like mid-major teams in the nation right now. They look really good against like at-large teams. I know I talk them up every single video, but I think they can get the job done. I think that they beat Florida State here in another 11 over 6 upset. Purdue will beat Bowling Green. I like Cincinnati here beating Minnesota. And then Kentucky will beat Montana. Then we have Tennessee beating the winner of Norfolk State and Ryder, which, I mean, I don't know who's going to win that game. Don't really care. I think that Baylor beats St. John's. I think that Texas game was a bit of a blip on the radar. Their hot streak had to come to an end at some point. But I think they're a better team than St. John's at this point, which, I mean, they did go on the road and beat Marquette. So, I mean, if there's any St. John's fans out there that want to give me a hard time, go ahead and do it. I'm going to go with Baylor beating St. John's. Then I think that Temple beats Arizona State in the first four, and then Wisconsin will beat Temple. And then right here, this is a rematch of uh, the fo college football season where Old Dominion upset Virginia Tech. I know a lot. Of, I have a couple of Virginia Tech fans. I'm so sorry for doing this and stuff like that and bringing back that hard memory. But I like Virginia Tech here. They'll get the revenge here against Old Dominion. I'm, I'm not too worried about that matchup. And Iowa, I think, will beat Florida. Louisville will beat Northern Kentucky in the battle of the Kentucky teams. Mississippi State, I think, will be Oklahoma, and then Michigan will be Princeton. Then first spot in the Sweet 16, Duke and Ole Miss. I like Duke winning that matchup. Villanova and Iowa State. I'm going to go with Iowa State here as a 5 over 4. I know I'm not a huge believer in Villanova this season, but they haven't been losing games so I'm, like recently. So, I, uh, I mean, I'm maybe selling them a bit short. Then I'm going to go with another upset here, 6 over 3. I like Kansas State beating Houston. Houston hasn't really played a ton of good opponents this season. And Kansas State has been through the ringer in the Big 12, and I think they're leading the conference at the moment. Then Michigan State, I think, will beat NC State. Gonzaga will beat Tyus Battle and Syracuse. I think that Nevada with the Martin Twins and Jordan Carolina beat LSU, though. They, that'll be a really good game. Then Kansas, I think, will beat VCU. Then we have North Carolina beating Wilford, even though last season, I think it was last season, Wilford went into Chapel Hill and beat North Carolina. That was hilarious because I'm not a huge North Carolina fan. 
I'm not a North Carolina fan at all. Uh, I think North Carolina gets the victory there, no doubt. And then I think that Virginia beats Washington. Marquette with Marcus Howard beat Texas Tech. Purdue will beat Lipscomb, and then Kentucky will beat Cincinnati. Then I think that Tennessee beats Baylor. Wisconsin, I think, gets the dub with Ethan Happ over Virginia Tech. Louisville will beat Iowa, and then Michigan will beat Mississippi State. Then for a spot in the Elite Eight, Duke and Iowa State. I like uh, Duke pulling off the – or not, I was about to say upset. I like them pulling it out here. I think that they're a much more talented team, and Iowa State's little run is going to come to an end right there. Then I'm going to go with another upset pick here. I'm moving on Kansas State with, uh, I think it's Barry Brown. It's either Barry Brown or Bruce. I keep getting it mixed up. And Dean Wade and that just that whole crew. I think they get the victory here over Michigan State, who's lost three in a row to unranked teams. And they've lost Langford uh, for the season. And I mean, they're just not looking good at this point. I'm going to go with the sixth seed moving on to the Elite Eight. And Gonzaga and Nevada, two of the best mid-major teams in the nation, if not the best. I'm going to go with an upset pick here. I'm putting Nevada on to the Elite Eight. I think that uh, people are underestimating them this season, and I think they were able to get the job done here against Gonzaga. Then uh, Kansas and North Carolina. I'm going to go with North Carolina with Luke May. And I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with the Legero uh, Vic situation in Kansas. De Silva has been ruled ineligible. As a week, he's gone for the season. I like North Carolina in that matchup. Virginia and Marquette. I'm going to go with another upset here. I'm going with another four over one. I'm going with Marquette beating Virginia. I think Marcus Howard leads them to the victory over Virginia. Then Kentucky and Purdue. Kentucky's been looking really good this season. I'm going to go with them beating Purdue with Carson Edwards. Tennessee and Wisconsin. I think Tennessee wins that matchup. Louisville and Michigan. Rematch of the 2013 National Championship game, even though Michigan uh, technically is the only team in that game for the NCAA's records. Louisville got that title vacated and the uh, just that whole like season and stuff like that. But I'm going to go with Michigan here. I think they get their slight revenge. I think they move on to the Elite Eight. And then for a spot in the Final Four, Kansas State's little run right here is going to come to an end at the buzzsaw that is Duke. Then North, I think that Nevada is going to end up beating North Carolina and move on to the Final Four. I think Kentucky with Tyler Hero and uh, Keldon Johnson and Ashton Higgins, P.J. Washington, you name them. I think that they're just going to overwhelm Marquette in Louisville where it's basically going to be a home game for Kentucky. I think that they beat Marquette. Then I think that Tennessee will beat Michigan to move on to the Final Four. Then in, for the spot in the national championship game, Duke versus Nevada. I'm going to go with Duke here. I think they're a better team at this point and just more talented. I think their youth and just overall talent and athleticism overcomes Nevada with their experience. And then Kentucky versus Tennessee. This match is uh, – there's they're going to face off twice before the season ends. I think the first one's at Kentucky in a couple weeks, and then the next one's going to be at Tennessee. I think that both, they split that. The home team wins each time. But on a neutral site, honestly don't know who's going to win this matchup. But I'm going to go with Kentucky because i got to go – with who I'd be rooting for in that matchup. I think that Kentucky is a better team than Tennessee. Tennessee has better individual players with Grant Williams and Admiral Schofield, but I think Kentucky's a better team, and they're just playing better as a team right now. And then Duke and Kentucky in the national championship game. As much as I want to pick Kentucky here and with Go Big Blue, I think that Duke wins this matchup. I don't think it's going to be a 34-point drubbing that it was at the beginning of the season, but I think that Duke does get the job done here against Kentucky, as much as I hate to admit it. But... There you have it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to uh, subscribe if you are new to get the 2,000 subscribers and have a chance to win an NCAA tournament ticket. Uh, leave a like and comment based off of what you thought about uh, Joe Lenardi's bracketology and stuff like that or what you think about my predictions and what your own predictions are. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all later.